This is a reading from Luke 22, 39 to 46. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. When he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, he knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. Luke 22 is a passage that probably helped save both my life and my faith by reminding me of God when I didn't quite know where to look for him. Because in this passage, I saw how Christ was trembling and nervous about a future that he knew was coming. I knew the shaking his body must have been doing, the trembling, known in periods of anxiety, the fidgeting that conveys the screams that you feel internally that you can't quite get out, the frozen feeling that your body goes into when you can no longer seem to make any movements at all. All of these expressions of emotion are not out of the realm of possibilities that he may have experienced that day, Because the scripture said that his sweat became like great drops of blood, a medical condition born out of periods of intense anxiety. And I felt when he cried out, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, remove this responsibility, remove this obstacle, remove this pain, remove this fear, remove this trial. Don't we all know and feel the intensity in this moment? These are the moments when a lot of us run away from God. Christ is kneeling and weeping and clinging to the Father, as he proclaimed, Yet not my will, but yours be done. Don't we all know the point in our life where all we can do is throw up our hands and surrender? The road of Christ is not the easiest to find, but it is the way that we are called to walk. And while walking that road, we can be comforted that Christ knows what that road feels like. He knows what the distractions and the temptations of this world look and feel like. He knows pain, heartache, and betrayal. He knows anxiety and depression, things that we typically try to hide from God, ourselves, and others Christ knows. And sometimes the only message that we need to know is that he understands what we are going through. Sometimes that is the only thing that we cling to when we have lost our grip on whatever it is that we have lost. And though Christ understands us, recognizing that is not all that we can learn and glean from this story. We should also heed his example and his warning as we go throughout our daily lives and face the temptations that we surely do face. In the good times and in the bad times, Christ went to spend time with the Father in prayer 
to seek guidance and direction and to express where he was in it at in his mind, entrusting all to the Father's care. We need to have regular conversations with God in the good times and in the bad times because it was Christ's practice. It was his custom. We need to go off by ourselves to pray, often enough that it becomes our own habit, our own custom. And in seeking God's guidance, we can more easily stay awake to keep watch over what God is doing around us. Because if we lose our connection with God, and if we lose our focus on Christ, temptation will creep in and seek to close the eyes that Christ told us to keep open. Jesus calls us to keep our eyes open and to stay awake and watch. May we all keep watch together on this day, on this night, and avoid the temptation all around us as we seek the Lord for direction. Let's dwell on this lesson just for a moment in silence. Abba, Father, I don't know what everyone in this room is going through, but you do. I don't know the things that you have gotten them through before, but you do. I don't know what they currently face and what drew them here today, but you do. All I know is why I'm here today why I need to stay awake, why I need to pray and face my fears and temptations, knowing that you understand where I'm at in those moments. May we know your embrace and comfort. May we know your direction. And may we pray always to stay awake and to pray. Amen. Reading from Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 to 51. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At the moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, and the rocks were split. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The earth shook, and the rocks were split. What must it have been like to be there at the foot of the cross, to be in complete darkness for three hours in the middle of the day, and then... As the Saviour breathed his last, to see the earth shake and the rocks split. How must it have been felt to be standing in the temple during those hours of darkness, to see the curtain tearing in two from top to bottom? I think it's easy for us here and now, knowing how this story ends, to lose perspective, to view the cross entirely in the light of the events to come. But that perspective is not a luxury that was afforded to those observers at the time. No. To them, this was it. 
This was where it had all led. This was where the story ends. In the darkness, all hope lost. They could all too easily relate to that cry that they were hearing from the condemned man. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why? Why has it come to this? Now, in a few minutes, we're going to be singing the wonderful hymn, Were You There? Which says, sometimes it causes me to tremble. How true is that? How often do we tremble with the wonder of just what happened there that day? How often do we experience the wonder that God died slowly and painfully there on that cross? How often do we experience the wonder of the earth shaking, the rocks splitting, the curtain of the temple tearing, as God died there in the darkness on the cross. How often do we tremble, thinking of how God died there, horrifically, painfully, to take the punishment for our sins? That cry of agony from the cross was not the mere ranting of a condemned man bemoaning his fate. It was an expression of absolute vulnerability from the God who created the world, who created us, who came as a man to walk among us, to call us to follow him and to be saved. How often do we tremble at that display of vulnerability? It was a cry of love, an expression of God's love for creation, a love so strong that he died there in agony for us, a love that cried out from the darkness to the fallen creation that he had come to redeem through his death, a love expressed in a way that required that utter vulnerability. How often do we tremble at that love? It's easy for the cross to be overshadowed by the resurrection. And yes, that's understandable. In a couple of days, we're going to celebrate the empty tomb. And the empty tomb brings hope, where the cross is tied up in despair. The empty tomb brings celebration where the cross brings us face to face with mortality, with vulnerability, and with the ultimate expression of love. And maybe we can get too caught up in that celebration, losing sight of just how radical that expression of love is. Maybe we can take our forgiveness for granted losing sight of just what it costs to purchase it. But maybe we can see past that. Maybe we can really look at the reason that we celebrate. Maybe we can really, really experience that true, vulnerable, horrible act of love. Maybe we can really really understand what it means for the earth to shake and the rocks to split and the temple curtain to be torn in two. Maybe we can wonder anew at the joy of salvation that was bought for us on the cross in the midst of such awful despair. And maybe, just maybe, Sometimes it can cause us to tremble. Amen. Let us pray.
But it's easy for us to forget just how horrible that death was that you suffered for us. It's easy for us to just take for granted the salvation that you offer us through that awful death of your son on the cross. Help us, Lord, not to take that for granted. Help us to remember the price that you willingly paid for us. And in remembering that, Lord, to live the lives that you call us to, to call others to know that love, that love that you gave so willingly. Help us, Lord, to never take that for granted, to always be thankful and to remember that, and to live those lives that you call us to. We ask these things in your precious name, Lord. Amen.